So the last part of our afternoon, which is very sad for us because we've really, really enjoyed it today. I'd like to welcome back Ellie, Phil and Colin. If you're there, guys. Lovely, brilliant. So if it's OK with you, I'd like to throw you um, a quite a common ethical scenario that we often come across in, in inherent cardiac condition services. And I'd like you to um, tell me how you would navigate this as the amazing professionals that you are. Um, so we have someone in our ICC service. They have been diagnosed with an inherent cardiac condition and um, we want and um, family screening is indicated, but our patient doesn't want to share that information with his estranged family. How would you navigate and manage that? Colin. <laughs> ah, thank you for throwing me this one. <laughs> <laughs> Throw you under the bus. No, I'm really joking. I know you can handle this. You've got this. OK, so my initial thought is, you know, you probably sort of introduce and bring in possibly the GP, you know, to see if they can help you, see if they can advise you obviously. Um, secondly, you know, you need to talk to the patient and see what the barriers are there to them sharing this information at the end of the day. Is it something that they're sort of concerned about? Is there some sort of relationship in the family they don't want to share the information with? Or is it that, as you said, they've been, they have sort of um, become estranged from their families or if they've, you know, they don't feel as if they want to communicate with their families. It is a challenge situation. I don't know if I have the answer, but you're looking to um, sort of, you know, talk, primarily sort of talk to the patient and see what their thoughts are and why they, uh, at this time, they won't want to share that information. Lovely, thank you. Ellie, you're nodding your head curiously there. Do you have anything to add? I've been there, I've been there. <laughs> Just, it's not really that common, but it does happen. Um, and in a way, the patient's being honest with you, telling you that they're not going to tell them. This is the ones we know about. Mm. Some of them will probably say, yeah, I'm going to tell them, and then they don't. So, But I have patients who've been really honest with me and tell, told me, no, I'm not going to tell my family. And as Colin said, you've got to know why that is. And actually, for some patients, they don't have any means of contact with their family, mm. and that's it. Um, but if they do have a means of getting in contact with them, thinking of a way we could help them get the information across, even if it's with like an anonymous letter that they could pass on to them, because um, that can sometimes make things easier. Um, I have had patients who've still refused and for them, my success has been time. So meeting with them again, yeah. next time they come in, meeting with them again, and eventually they come around to the idea and we start sharing information. But, um, but yeah, it can be really tricky um, to deal with. Thank you, guys. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got a question. Um, Hannah, we, we were talking about um, how valuable psychological services are for um, patients with uh, uh, inherited cardiac conditions. And we're very fortunate here in our tertiary centres that we've got amazing people that we work with that can provide this service. But it's not um, always available uh, funding budgets. There are lots of reasons why it's not so straightforward that we can immediately refer people on to um, your services. So um, what are your thoughts on how we can try to improve access and overcome some of those barriers for patients? Oh, hold on. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> un unmuted, then muted, then unmuted. Excellent. Right, I'm here. I um, I think it's a really good point. Um, I think that we are really fortunate that there is funding. Um, but I think that um, probably more business cases could be put forward mm. for um, psychological resources um, in other centres as well. I mean, there is a growing evidence. I think part of it is that there isn't a lot of research, so there's not huge amounts of, you know, it's growing and there are centres that are, are starting to do more research, but I think that um, it, it, it is evidencing it, isn't it? And then mm -hmm. putting forward bids um, and funding um, specifically for this area. And I wonder whether as the um, awareness of ICCs grows and um, that will also come hand in hand. Um, but I definitely think it is something that is is really it it's it feels like it should be part of the service, not a junction to the service. 
um, and yeah. yeah. Absolutely, I think that's a really good way of describing it. it uh, ICC really is a very multidisciplinary way of working and we need um, to be able to access the input of all the different members of the team. Um, I have one more question about uh, mainstreaming of genetic testing and the GMSA Genomic Medicine Service Alliances wanting to increase accessibility to um, uh, gene testing. Now, um, obviously, that would open up how much genetic testing we do, where we do it, how we do it. And I just wondered, it's a, going to be a very large task. And what are your thoughts about how we should um, proceed with this and how we could make this uh, a feasible thing to roll out in coming years? And Phil, <laughs> Phil, <laughs> you give, give us your thoughts there. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very big on mainstreaming in genetics because it's a way of getting other people to do the testing so that we don't have to do all of it, which is very <laughs> useful. But um, I think cardiology is probably ahead of many other medical specialties in that regard in that there are already a lot of specialist centers which coordinate genetic testing. The, the next step really will be spreading that out across the country so that patients have equity of access to testing wherever they happen to be seen, whether it's the Brompton or their local DGH. Um, I think one of the things which is really useful is sort of professional education and and one of the things which so there's a bit of a shameless plug coming but the uh health uh, the genomics education program at health education england is producing a series of uh, online resources called g notes um which are going to be specifically targeted at mainstream clinicians who are involved in genetic testing um and part of that will be for cardiology so it's something that's sort of in development at this stage and the idea is it will basically be an online resource where at the point of care a specialist will be able to access the information that they need to decide which patients are going to need genetic testing how to talk to them about the tests and hopefully that will be you know just an example of the sort of thing we can do to make it easier to to mainstream effectively and I guess a lot of that is being able to translate this information and that's when it comes down to not only people like ourselves, but you know, allied health professionals, nurses, and I want to plug actually while I'm here, um, the genomics education program um, with Health Education England, they have an incredible website, incredible resources and online education, um, but also fully funded um, courses. Um, in genomics and um, introductions to genomics, especially targeted at nurses and other allied health professionals. So that's something that everyone listening today should certainly be aware of going forward. So we're coming to a close, we're a little bit early, uh, but I was just wondering if any of you guys have any fi final thoughts, if there's anything that you know people today should take away from the session, what, what would that be? Should I go first? Go on, Colin. If you're under, if you are, in, you know, wanting to get more information about, you know, doing a family history, you know, and as I said, the uh, Health Education England website, and Genomics England, do wonderful information, as you said, Beth. Um, and also, you know, practice, practice, practice with family, mm -hmm. practice with friends, practice with colleagues, maybe. Because interestingly, relating that back to what you said earlier about mainstreaming, is the number of times we meet with clinical colleagues of the ward, nurses, be my interest, maybe. And they have no idea about the patient's conditions, about inherited cardiac conditions. So, you know, it's part, it's, it, 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 you know, this is sort of part of the beginning of something very special, I think. Great. Fabulous. Well, I think that we will draw this session to a close. Thank you very much to all of our speakers for delivering such fantastic talks, lovely, clear and really providing a broad overview and setting us up well for the forthcoming sessions that will expand on particular areas that we've introduced in this one. I would like to give very special thanks to Jo for coming uh, onto this program and sharing her very personal and uh, courageous story with us. So thank you very much, Jo. And also um, to thank the South London uh, Cardiovascular Operational Delivery Network for supporting us in being able to set up this program. So thank you very much to all. And let's not forget the speakers, Zoya. They were incredible today. Thank you so much. It really shows how expert and fantastic you are. And I think you've been able to really relay that information in, in a great way for everyone. So thank you so much for all your time and being able to answer the questions. Thank you, guys. Um, our next session will be on inherited cardiomyopathies, and that's scheduled for March 
the 8th. If you do want to attend that, then you must re register again. So um, please do so via the usual way. I'm sure it'll be on Eventbrite as well. But otherwise, we thank you so much. Please complete the MCQ, um, the multiple choice questions form that comes along with the feedback and you'll receive an email about that shortly. And once you've done that, it will generate a certificate of attendance. So thank you so much and um, we hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye bye. Good evening.